Hi guys, it's Nana Foxy Mama 365. We're back again with the Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13, episode 3. Yeah, we're slogging right through. Mm -hmm. So Portia is back in Kentucky again for the match for Breonna Taylor. Uh, a lot of people are like bashing Portia and saying it's really, um, I don't know. A lot of people are like, oh, they get it. That it, I don't know. People are, I'm, for me, I'm happy when someone is able to give themselves for a good cause and I think this was a good cause I mean because you have to put in your money your time to go out there and be you know and expose yourself in the pandemic and all and so it was it was good it was you know it was um it's good to see but does that a storyline make I don't know I'm already tired of it okay but we're gonna push on through okay moving right along <laughs> Um, we see Drew, her husband, her mom. Her mom is talking about the theme for her her sermon and it's called Bright Bridal Your Tongue. And she's trying to like kind of say, you know, the kids that her daughter Drew and Ralph, you know, the kind of things you say when you're arguing. That's probably where she's probably coming from. However, you see Ralph's insecurities already like, oh, you're going to come at me, you know, he's going to be at already attacking me. So he's kind of like already feeling attacked. And Drew is trying to say, calm down. She hasn't even said anything. She's talking to both. She didn't mention your name, but he's like, nope, nope, nope. She's coming for me already. And the lady's trying to say, in my mind, I'm like, oh, this was exhausting to watch because I feel like, oh, listen, as a married woman, I'm already going through my own situation with my husband. I don't need to come and be watching you guys do your own fighting. Listen, no, too much for me. Like, oh, I, I, uh, no thanks, no thanks. And I'm also thinking that, you know what? I really don't want Drew's mom to be in the mix. Yeah, two is company, three is a crowd. Yeah, I would, I really would want for Drew's mom to be neutral really really neutral and pretty much a fly on the wall yeah i really don't want i mean if she has anything to say i'd rather she i, I don't know i just really would it, it's already hard enough dealing with one person and now to have two people it's always it's not gonna it's not gonna go well I, yeah. two in a relationship three no nah, it's too much Kenya is sitting down with Latoya or Latoya is coming to, you know, to meet up with Kenya and they're going to have a little talk and they're fast becoming fast buddies. They're kind of cute. Kenya's ass, Latoya's ass, all that ass. You know, the thing is, with them, um, when you have, allegedly, when you have these things, these booty things going on, sometimes it kind of looks weird because it looks unnatural. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty sometimes however it's also too much okay well anyways Jules is going on to say I'm um, not Drew Latoya is going on to say she has no issue with Drew however Kenya is like why are you coming for her why are you talking about the, her hair and of course they go on you see them and I'm like thinking to, your, to myself like how old are you guys 50 and you guys still don't know that if you don't have anything nice to say you should shut the hell up anyways they're going on to attack Drew, who has done absolutely nothing to them, and say, oh, her wig, she's coming from LA, where they have the best wigs, where they have the best of everything. How come she's carrying that pussy <laughs> on her head and all of that, that, that they don't have an issue with her. So Kenya is even asking, what about the fact that she's calling you out on moving on and, you know, even though you haven't gotten your divorce, how come it's okay for you to, you know, be dating while you're still, you know, married? And she's like, she doesn't have an issue with that. That's her business. That's her opinion. I have moved on. My husband was a dick. And there's no point, you know, remaining in the relationship. So what am I going to, you know, I have decided. She's pretty much, she has decided she's no longer going to be with the man. And like I said in my last uh, video, I said it's up to the woman. You know, if you have decided that, okay, you know what? I'm not going to be in this relationship anymore. You know, you're just waiting for the paper paperwork to come through and all of that. I think you can you know start dating or you know just move on or move on with your life i don't think you like but it's left to you what makes you comfortable and what makes you happy that's the bottom line anyways drew is trying to get uh no, how am i keep saying drew latoya is trying to get kenya to you know get moving and kenya like yeah she's probably going to see how things work out for her but yeah she's gonna see but they're trying to go and take a nice some nice cute pictures and she's gonna edit out the ring <laughs> 
The ladies are getting shit in, at Candy's house. And I'm like, once again, all I can see is ass, ass, booty, 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 booty. I'm like, oh, everybody. I think the only person whose booty looks a little, like, normal is probably Cynthia. And that's probably because Cynthia has the height. But the rest of them and Candy, like, it's like, then you see. <laughs> I don't know. It's not, ah, no. Those asses looked huge, okay? <laughs> So Cynthia is telling the ladies about the wedding situation and what she's um, trying to achieve. She's still hoping that they can have 250 people at the wedding, which is kind of a lot. And Kanye is trying to say, girl, you can just do something in your backyard. You have a beautiful, you have enough space. You can have a nice outdoor garden thing. And if it's an outdoor thing, then you can have more people actually, you know. But, and then, but the thing is... I don't. I just still don't understand why Cynthia wanted to have such a huge wedding. I totally get it. She could either have moved the date, but she wanted the 10, 10, 5th, 2020 to be the date, which is the 10th of October, 2020. That was meant to be their day, which is understandable. But she has to do so much more. She hasn't done the prenup yet, and I hope, girl, that you did that prenup. And like, Ken and Kenya made it really easy. You know, don't be a candy situation where it's until the day before the wedding and then it becomes... Because you see Todd really held on to that thing for a while, even after they got married. Because Candy wasn't happy the first year of her marriage, you know. I think later on Todd was able to explain and see how he felt. And that he felt kind of betrayed or attacked into signing that the prenuptial a day before just so that he could get the wedding on, you know. They didn't waste all that money and time and effort. But so, but Candy said, like Kenya said, Kenya said, what is yours is yours, what is mine is mine. And when we come together, whatever assets we grow and the, then we share 50-50. It's as simple as that. Get it done. Moving right along. Tanya and Portia. I love to see Tanya. I really hope Tanya and Portia get to get their act. Allegedly, they are not um, speaking terms because we haven't seen any pictures of them together. But we'll see. So Tanya is going to be hanging out with Portia and her sister Lauren and they're going to a friend's house and I think her name is Fallon's. They're going to Fallon's house and um, yeah, she, she's Portia's friend, they're going swimming. And I think the ladies are just happy to be out for a day out, you know, being at home in the, in the quarantine for five months. And of course, Portia is getting to telling us about what's going on with her and Dennis and how initially it was like a honeymoon and in less than two, three months it now became pretty much, pretty much a different situation I just really get it but she's trying to compartmentalize and say that she's doing work she's doing PJ and she's you know doing the the, the, the thing she's doing with the with the Brianna Taylor situation and anything outside that she's like the relationship didn't even matter like she's like just trying to live her life and I totally get that I don't think I don't know how I really don't know We'll see. We'll see how this relationship. I don't. We, I haven't. It would be nice to see Portia and Dennis. We haven't seen Dennis so far, but it would be nice to see what happens. I. It would be nice because they're engaged at this point. I didn't even realize that. I forgot to say that they got engaged and they're still not married. Well, it is what it is. The house. Ooh, Fallon's house is nice, you know. And I and I think her husband is a Nigerian, Gwabadia. Gobadia is a ni definitely a Nigerian name, so for sure he's a Nigerian. I would like to know what he's doing, okay? Because he had some stuff, she had some gifts, some nice gifts laid out for 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 Portia and, and for the girls when they were leaving. And they're like, yeah, that's how they roll, okay? And then of course they get to talk. First of all, they get to pushing each other into the pool, and I thought that was such a cute. I really like seeing Portia, and I really do like the the relationship, the dynamic between Portia and Tanya. It's just refreshing. Okay, I'd rather that situation to seeing Candy, Kenya, and Cynthia. I, like, that bores me easily. But with, Ke with Portia, I like that. I like seeing Portia and Tanya. Anyways, they get to pushing each other into the pool. Portia literally lifts her sister and throws her into the pool, which is kind of cool. Then they get to pushing the uh, Faleen into the pool as well. As, and, and of course, they're just pretty much they're all in the pool. And then they get to talking about the Black Lives Matter situation. And they get to about how serious it is and how she has to really be dedicated and have to keep speaking up about it you know sometimes people feel powerless people are tired of talking about it but like i said we we have to just keep speaking up about it and that's pretty much all we got her house is a nine thousand square foot house no, no that's not her house um drew is getting a new house she says it's not too far from where they live currently 
Uh, she's very excited about it. Can they just start moving in right now? They're going to hopefully go look at check, check out the house. And of course, Ralph is saying, yeah, just, you know, focus on packing up. I'm going to be focusing on tying up the knots. And she's like, what else is there to be done? And he's telling her, we have to find the deed. We have to check out the house, make sure that there's, it's clean. In other words, there's no kind of proper lien on it or any kind of um, ownership on it and stuff like that. And she's like, I would like for you to carry me along. It has to be a we thing and not a me or an I situation. And Ralph is saying, yes, I get that. But you know what? You just focus on this. I will focus on that. And it, it's, it has to be teamwork. And Drew is saying, you know what? I really would like for you to, to turn, you know, to make it, to, to carry me along when you're doing all the stuff you're doing. And then we're going to be going to counseling pretty much. And I like, it's, it's probably healthy for them to go to cancel and talk about their situation because it looks like they are unable to resolve it on their own uh, you know so, and most of the time they just pretty much put their head in the sand and that's pretty much it so of course Ralph starts again with oh you've already spoken to the lady the you've picked you've picked the counselor and she's going to the therapist and she's already going to be biased oh, oh my gosh it's like not again anyways Cynthia and Mike are going to be viewing the grounds for their wedding and Mal, Cynthia's sister, shows up and she says Mike and Mal have a great relationship, which is kind of cool, and that they're good friends. And they're hoping to still keep the 10 10 20 20 date, but they start arguing. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And Mike is saying he likes it, it's really grand, and all of that. We can have, but Mal is saying, Girl, it's a pandemic, you can actually still have. To, you can have to have people at the back of your house and not have so many people and not be bothered about all the restraints. And of course, Mike chimes in and is like, yeah, that's also something that we can do. However, Cynthia gets upset and starts whining and literally like, oh, why are you guys trying to make me look like, like I'm an asshole here? You know, I just want my sister to just have my back for once, you know, just be on my side. And I'm like, girl, what are you upset about? Mike is saying pretty much that. Cynthia. It don't matter whether the people are there or they are not there or whether we are in this big mansion or we're at the back of your house. I want you to tell me that 10, 10, 20, 10, 20, you will be my wife. You are the price for me. And I want to also know that kind of like I am the price for you. You know, and Cynthia is saying, yeah, I love you. And, all, and we get it that they love each other. However, she still wants that big thing. She, and she's saying she wants it for him. And, and he's like, mm -mm. I just want to know that you are actually were getting married for the right reasons so this doesn't work out cynthia gets upset they leave and of course in the car it starts up again the conversation girl what do you want since you want this place mike has said i'm gonna not gonna go anywhere else since you want to have this wedding here we're gonna have it here i just want to make you happy so why are they still fighting anybody I, this, I, I think Cynthia is just trying to manufacture drama and be the, the bridezilla this season and I could care less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to share, be sure to like and subscribe. Woohoo!